Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another tournament online. This time is, the, of course, the last one in 2020. This is part of the Champions Chess Tour and it's called Earthings Masters. Um, now, tournament format is at 15 minutes and 10 seconds incrementation, so rapid time control. We have two stages, preliminaries and then knockout phase. Uh, we have 12 players and out of 12 players we're gonna have eight players uh, who advance to the knockout stage and knockout are the two head-to-head -head matches played over two days uh, the preliminaries first is like a round robin played over three days so every player uh, gonna face each other player once they're gonna play once they don't play you know with the black or, or white pieces so that's about the format and now let me introduce you the players. We have Levon Aronian, Alexander Grishuk, Teimur Rajabov, uh, David Anton, Jan Nepomniashi, Daniel Dubov, Magnus Carlsen, Anish Giri, Wesley Soap and Tala Hare Krishna, uh, Hikaru Nakamura and Maxim Vashiel Lagraf. So 12 best players of the um, tournaments before. Uh, the only exception was David Anton who got uh, advanced to this tournament by voting by his fans. So that, that was option for chess24.com um, customers that they could choose uh, who gonna play and, and David Anton won that. So without further ado, let me introduce you the players from round one. One. So we have Daniel Dubov who's going to play as white and his opponent is David Anton who's going to play as black. Uh, Dubov opens with d4, we have knight f6, we have c4, we have e6, knight f3, we have d5, so queen's gambit declined and now we have g3. So Catalan um, uh, setup and now d takes on c4. We have bishop g2, this is of course the theory, we have c6 with the idea of playing b5 to defend this c4 pawn. Uh, we have castle by Dubov, we have b5 as planned and now the most popular variation is a4. Now after a4, a6 uh, and then play knight e5 and this is quite tricky because now this pawn can be taken uh, and this bishop is extremely strong uh, pointing at the rook uh, and also uh, this rook is also pointing at the rook so none of these pawns actually can um, take back so bishop b7 have to be played and then after a takes on b5 a takes on b5 exchanging the rooks uh, we can have for example knight c3 and the knight can pick up the pawn on b5 and it's uh, very very difficult to actually uh, do anything about that uh, the main idea here is actually give up one pawn after bishop e7, knight b5, uh, c takes on b5, bishop a8, uh, and this is the position which was played a couple of times. And uh, we have had 16 games on the top level. Topalov, Veselin Topalov played, for example, against Vasily Ivanchuk, so it's pretty much well known. Uh, the position is completely equal and also the material is equal so this is pretty much playable black have two pawns against one pawn on the queen side but white gonna have much stronger uh, pawn center so um, that's the idea uh, we have knight e5 so dubov plays very similar but he early jump with the knight to e5 we have bishop b7 we have knight c3 and now we have a6 a4 again this is um, this is pretty much much possible and we would have very similar variation that by transposition could actually uh, got to the same which I just show you however Dubov decided that he can be in this position pawn down uh, and he played b3 and it's still the theory of course we have c takes on b3 a takes on b3 bishop e7 so David Anton of course want to castle as fast as possible we have bishop b2 moving the bishop to this beautiful diagonal uh, and now now we have the castle. Uh, we have knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4 uh, and now a5. So advancing the pawns on the queen side. We have queen c2 now attacking the pawn on the h7. We have h6 and here we have one game in the database where rook f to d1 uh, was played. It's a pretty natural move of course supporting um, the pawn on d4. But for now of course it cannot be
be played because both of the pawns um, defend d5. Uh, cannot be played or can. That is uh, interesting. In this variation, the another rook, uh, for example, can go to c1 and also put the pressure on c6. However, here Dubov went for something creative, as always Daniel Dubov is doing. Rook f to c1. So he want to keep the rook on the a file as it's semi open, but at the same time he want to put the pressure on the uh, on the c file. We have bishop f6. And now it looks like white actually can win the pawn on c6. So what would happen? Let's check. Knight c6 and then we would have knight c6, of course, bishop c6. But now instead of taking the bishop, uh, rook c8, pinning that bishop. Uh, and now after queen e4, bringing another defender. So everything it looks uh, good for white. Uh, however, we can have rook c6, uh, rook c6. And now again, instead of taking the rook first, queen a8. So the rook is pinned. So again, rook a to c1, uh, bishop c6, queen c6, queen c6, rook c6, and now rook a8. So after forced exchange of everything, uh, black gonna have the passed pawn uh, on the a file, which can be very dangerous. So the position is equal by material, if count the material, uh, we have, you know, the same material. However, uh, this bishop is attacking the pawn on d4, and this bishop is quite passive, defending, and as I said, two pawns on the queen side can be uh, very dangerous. So that would be slightly better for black so of course uh, winning that pawn it it's kind of the trap not not really the trap however as you already see black would have much more promising endgame and everything of course would be exchanged knight g4 daniel dubov uh, plays very actively attacking the bishop now very interesting uh, what could be played here uh, if black want to preserve pair of bishops that would be uh, pretty natural how to do that uh, if you for example try to do that with bishop e7 it's extremely tricky because now d5 this pawn can be sacrificed open the diagonal for this bishop and look at this another bishop is also on this diagonal and these bishops are deadly uh, in couple of weeks i'm gonna show you the immortal game as part of the rubinstein saga uh, of akiba rubinstein and this was inspiration for a lot of players a lot of you know generations vichy anand has his immortal game also with this bishop uh, pointing at the position and with this knight jumping around. Uh, so for example what could happen? E takes on d5 and now bishop h7 king h8 and knight h6. So look at this this pin is just deadly if black want to uh, you know stop that pin play something like bishop f6 it's pretty natural this would be losing move because of bishop g8 and look at this the queen h7 this is the checkmate in one move and not much can be done um, g6 can be played of course that's the one of the ideas if this bishop is taken interesting checkmate would happen as the queen covers h7 so this this would be very very interesting so of course something like g6 would be played uh, but it's still a much uh, better position for white is completely winning uh, so probably black would have to play something like queen d7 and it's extremely difficult to find the move like that and um, the idea is to push f5 so uh, of course, bishop g8 doesn't work anymore because after um, f5, this bishop does nothing and the queen doesn't have access to h7. So uh, white would lose one of the pieces, so that's not possible. Uh, but rather after queen d7, probably this bishop would just retreat. Uh, and after, let's say, queen e6, the knight also has to retreat. So knight f5, uh, then bishop f6, and everything should be fine with the position of black, but you know, uh, it's it's extremely difficult to defend that. So uh, that, that would be very, very risky actually to play something like bishop e7. Uh, another idea very simple would be just give um, pair of bishops for free voluntarily and play knight d7 the good about this move is that black gonna have uh, the development faster development so after knight f6 uh, knight f6 and then bishop retreat to g2 and the game can continue
So in this variation black stays with the extra pawn and uh, have a little bit less active position but it's still very very much playable for both of the sides. Uh, but Davin Anton doesn't want to give away his pair of bishops so he played bishop g5. Very active move attacking the rook and now we have f4 blocking. Now we have f5 so this is the idea as the bishop didn't have a good squares and now everything is hanging so what Daniel Dubov should do in this position? That's the question. And you know what he did? He didn't care that two of his pieces are under attack and he sacrificed also the pawn. So what are the options for black? So for example, bishop e7, that would be possible, uh, but it's very, very tricky because after d takes on c6, knight c6, bishop c6, then queen b6 with the check and now the king cannot go to h1 that would be completely losing because rook a to c8 actually pinning this bishop so if this bishop uh, is exchanged then of course the queen is lost uh, and if knight e5 pretty much logical defending the bishop then simply rook c6 and after knight c6 again rook c8 again pinning and you cannot do much here because this knight is completely pinned uh, the queen still controls g1 so you cannot uh, get out and uh, you're gonna lose the game. So that would not be possible. This is why king f1 would have to be played. But still, uh, queen c6 exchanging the queens, uh, bishop c6, and then now this knight is under attack and uh, also exchanging the bishop for the knight this way. It's better to take one extra pawn at least. So knight h6, g takes on h6, and after rook c6, uh, what can be played? Maybe king f7, uh, this pawn is under attack. So maybe rook c7, pinning the bishop and so on. So everything is fine with the position the material is completely equal however white have a little bit more active position so uh, bishop e7 could be played however it's a very very tricky maybe it would actually give some uh, possibilities of mating ideas uh, for black to to actually to make some attack so one of the options f takes on g4 was also possible but simply f takes on g5 and after queen g5 uh, d takes on e6 and now black can play knight um, a6 and so on okay so this is possible white would have this pawn and that would be quite lonely pawn without so support of other pawns but still could be very dangerous uh, but the position is supposed to be equal uh, also c takes on d5 is possible very interesting uh, f takes on g5 and now queen g5 first because one of this uh, piece is gonna be taken later so probably after bishop d6 F takes on g4 and believe me or not but the only move which is not losing for white is actually very active queen c7 this is the, um, the only way to go so for example queen e3 with the check king h1 now rook f7 defending the pawn on g7 that would be the you know some mating ideas here and also defending the, the bishop probably something like queen d8 and um, rook f8 but look at this the, the queen is very active but this bishop are also still very very dangerous so that would probably end in a draw in some you know trifold repetition but the position is extremely extremely sharp so this crazy possibilities could be played. However, we have F takes on E4. So at least couple of very complicated variations had to be calculated by Daniel Dubov or maybe he just thought, okay, that's gonna be, you know, something very dangerous and I think uh, I'm gonna do that. Now, the point is that this bishop disappeared. However, the knight is still on G4 and it can be very, very dangerous. D takes on E6. So uh, Daniel Dubov didn't even take the bishop saying okay i sacrifice the whole piece and now i'm gonna continue the attack so how to continue as black black probably would like to save the bishop so there are two ways of doing that two correct ways and one which is losing so correct ways is bishop e7 simply blocking the pawn uh, what can go wrong queen e4 with the idea of queen g6 and checkmate on g7 and it's not that easy to defend g7 uh, 
because actually this pawn uh, protects f7, controls f7, so the rook, for example, cannot get there. So black would have to play queen e8 and um, just to take under control g6, and then after f5, uh, let's say queen h5, then we can have queen d4, another mating ideas here, uh, rook f6 to be found now uh, by David Anton, but this is the only move, um, and now after knight f6, uh, bishop f6 staying with this bishop on the diagonal here so that could be the option so for example queen b6 bishop b2 queen b7 uh, and now queen e2 and look at this that probably would end with the draw uh, and white would have to be very very careful there are some mating ideas here even uh, made on h1 so probably white would have to play queen f7 uh, and make a threefold repetition uh, between these two points and uh, draw that game. So that was possible. Uh, it was very, very crazy. h5 was also possible. You take my bishop, I'm gonna take your knight. So probably f takes on g5, h takes on g4 and now queen c5. Uh, and this is extremely tricky again i even I'm, I'm even lost if you try to bring the knight to the game this is losing a move for example knight a6 is the losing move uh because of the queen e5 and now how you're gonna defend the, the g7 the only way is queen e7 uh but now g6 and the queen want to checkmate this way and you cannot defend everything rook f6 queen h5 and now the only way to actually not lose immediately is sacrifice the rook and lose the game so what black would have to do here believe me or not the only move in the position which saves the black position is knight d7 so give back the material and now the queen cannot come to the e5 can only play queen d4 uh, and still keep this uh, threat however now queen g5 can be played and this pawn can be defended uh, so for example queen d7 bishop c8 uh, and after queen c6 uh, rook a6 winning finally this pawn uh, for example queen c5 uh, and after exchanging everything then bishop e6 and again the position is rather equal and it could be played however it's extremely extremely uh, complicated so two very uh, complicated and double edge variation bishop e7 and uh, h5 these are the way to go however david anton make a blunder and he played bishop f6 and now it looks like the most logical move uh countering the bishop on b2 however it's losing so feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for Daniel Dubov while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so there are two ways of taking this bishop which one is better Daniel Dubov went for knight f6 however bishop f6 was way to go now what is the idea the point is of course if a black takes with the rook then uh, white gonna win the exchange so g takes on f6 and now queen e4 and we're gonna have all of these threats so queen e7 queen g6 queen g7 but now knight h6 with the check king h8 and now simply very simply just exchange bring the knight to f5 uh, and as you see then the pawn actually controls f7 so king g6 now knight d6 and the knight controls uh, e8 and it's almost game over bishop c8 for example now e7 and um, rook g8 and now just promotion win the exchange uh, and the game so white have one extra exchange should be actually easy to win if this knight is moved uh, then of course this pawn is hanging and so on so white have completely winning position here this is what daniel dubov could play however he played knight f6 and now there is the huge difference because after g takes on f6 which was played queen e4 there are no threats anymore because the knight cannot take on h6 so we have queen e7 the same and now of course queen g6 doesn't work anymore uh because what you're gonna do uh queen h5 now knight a6 and black everything is fine with the position yes this pawn is lost uh but now knight c7 
Rook a8, bishop a8, and now f5. So white would have two pawns for the for the knight and uh, this very dangerous protected passed pawn. So it would be extremely difficult for black to play, but maybe maybe actually uh, black could hold that position. Uh, however, we have f5 immediately uh, by uh, Daniel Dubov, uh, and now black have to do something. So developing uh, better late than never. We have knight a6. This of course caused the pawn on a5 uh, and now instead of playing c5 c5 is the way to go watch at that c5 now the queen is under attack and of course the bishop is defended so queen h4 uh, and now knight c7 defending the pawn on b5 and also attacking the rook so probably exchanging the rooks and after queen h6 play knight e8 and try to stabilize the position bring the knight to defense and that was the way to uh, go for black however we have h5 and now the position is very difficult to defend h5 actually controls g4 however at the same time this pawn can be um, attacked so we have queen f3 now attacking the pawn uh, queen h7 now defending and now rook d1 very strong move now the rook is coming to d7 very logical so we have rook a to d8 and here again Daniel Dubov had the chance to get the very, very active position. Look at this. Rook d8, just exchange. Rook d8, and now bishop could take on f6. And it doesn't look so attractive because black would get the activity of rook d1. However, after king g2, what are you gonna play next? c5, now it looks very, very dangerous. So e4, now the queen is attacking the rook. This game was just insane how many possibilities were on the board. This, this is just insane what the players had to calculate. Rook e1 and now this bishop could, for example, attack on e4. But the point is that after rook a4, six believe me or not bishop e4 doesn't work because after bishop e4 uh, we would have rook a8 with check and after bishop a8 uh, the next move believe me or not this is the checkmate this is the checkmate black cannot do anything this is beautiful just beautiful checkmate uh, the bishop controls all of these squares and the queen is on the way of the king so that would not be possible and if in this position black play something more sneaky like rook e4 uh, making maybe some discoveries there is the problem because rook b6 and now uh, just giving up the exchange here in this position queen c7 uh, rook b7 queen b7 king f2 getting away from this diagonal uh, very important and after let's say queen d5 threatening uh, queen d2 uh, that would be also very dangerous bishop c3 defending uh, now before kicking the bishop but now e7 is winning and the uh, uh, rook cannot take it because the queen is hanging and if king f7 then the queen can be activated pretty crazy stuff king e7 now f6 with the check uh, king d6 and now after queen d5 uh, king d5 f7 wins the game the pawn cannot be stopped so pretty insane stuff b, b takes on c3 and now white gonna win with the queen what the heck is going on this game uh, is so rich in so uh, complicated stuff I, it was the pleasure to actually uh, you know make all of this analysis however Dubov uh, went for rook a to a1 now defending the rook we have queen h6 bring the queen to the game to more active square we have king f2 uh, and now we have rook d5 preparing to double the rooks so we have rook d5 daniel dubov uh, doesn't like that idea c takes on d5 and now daniel dubov missed his chance actually to win the game but again this is another very very complicated variation if you want you can pause the video and find the winning continuation it's a pretty nice idea uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so for the second time this time is uh, also quite insane rook a6 this is the idea the queen want to come to d5 so um bishop a6 queen d5 and what now uh, of course e7 is coming with the check so for example rook e8 but now queen d7 with the attack on the rook so this is what we had to calculate and now after queen f8 white have very beautiful bishop a3 
attacking the queen look at this and the queen has nowhere to go so have to take the bishop and, and now what white can do is actually take all of these three pieces two pawns and the rook uh still checking the king so this is the trick uh, queen f7 with check king h8 and now queen e8 first king g7 now queen g6 with the check king h8 otherwise if the king uh, goes to f8 we're gonna have the checkmate on f7 so king h8 and now queen h5 king g7 again queen g6 king h8 again and now queen f6 so clear all of this and now after king g8 queen f7 king h8 uh, e7 of course wins the game uh, black can deliver one check or something uh, even one more check even can stop the pawn exchange for the for the bishop uh, but of course that's gonna be the bishop for the pawn and white still gonna have four pawns to win the game in the pure uh, queen's end game so of course it's completely winning for white there is no way to actually stop so rook a6 followed by the queen um, on d5 uh, and then bringing the queen to d7 this is the idea if you found it congratulations um, but we have rook e5 so Daniel Dubov maybe he wanted to actually play that idea and he dropped the rook before uh, maybe that was the mouse slip I'm not really sure uh, but uh, rook e5 doesn't do much I mean attacking the, the pawn on b5 I'm not sure if that was the idea uh, and now the problem is that knight c5 was very very strong because now uh, the rook of course can take on b4 but now d4 would be very interesting attacking the queen and the knight is defending the bishop so here is the uh, point so what to do now not many choices rook b7 can be played or queen f4 doesn't really matter now black could play knight e4 with the check uh, king f1 now queen f4 um, and after bishop c6 we're gonna have again the similar end game uh, i show you a couple of times but this time we have uh, three pawns for the knight and these pawns uh, are not that great as before but it's still very dangerous uh, past pawn which is protected and that's gonna be very difficult also uh, for black actually to play that so uh but that was the best what david anton could do however after rook a5 he played d4 immediately uh, and that actually is the blunder because now the bishop is without the protection and uh, the idea is to bring the queen to e3 uh, and try to do something with the pawn uh, however it doesn't work because now after queen b7 queen b7 queen e3 king f1 we had actually d3 uh, but now you can pause the video for the last time and win the game for daniel dubov so find the only defensive move in this position while i enjoy my cup of tea for the last time okay ready it takes on d3 doesn't work because if you simply want to take uh then black actually have queen d3 and we would have a threefold repetition here king g2 queen e2 uh, you can go to h3 but then of course we're gonna have the check uh and also that would be the threefold repetition not much can be done the correct move is very simple queen f3 and now not much can be done here so if queen f3 e takes on f3 d2 then king e2 of course is coming uh, and if rook d8 then king d1 and white can enjoy the end game with the three extra pawn the knight is under attack uh, so once the knight is moved then this pawn also gonna be fold and uh white gonna have two connected past pawn uh, also with some support of another pawns so it's completely winning of course for white uh, otherwise d2 but d2 also doesn't work because of the queen e3 and yes black can uh, promote to the queen but just lost the queen so it's just lost this pawn so king f2 and of course is completely winning for white as well so david anton try something else but it also doesn't work queen d2 with the attack on the rook uh but now simply rook a6 exchanging the the pieces so queen b2 and now queen d3 winning the only hope uh for getting some counterplay and now if you count the the pawns white actually have three extra pawns so rook c8 was played and we had a e7 uh and now rook c 
one doesn't work uh, because this is only one check and after king g2 there are no more checks so whatever can be played is queen e5 maybe uh, trying to stop that pawn but then we're gonna have queen d8 uh, and of course this is game over white is winning here so this is why we have rook e8 and now rook e6 by Daniel Dubov uh, we have king f7 we have queen f3, the rook is protected by the pawn, now going after this pawn, so David Anton defended. So queen c1 with the check, king g2, and now queen h6 defending the pawn. Uh, but now the queen, white queen is a very active, queen d5, now threatening some discoveries. We have king g7 and now queen b5 winning the pawn. So we have king f7 going back, now queen c4 again threatening some discoveries, uh, but now now we have rook e7 uh, and here rook e4 so this is the discovery not very dangerous but of course white uh, have four extra pawns now uh, we have king e8 we have queen g8 we have king d7 rook d4 and in this position david anton resign and he resigned because uh, he cannot save the game uh, if he run with the king, he gonna get checkmated in couple of moves. Uh, queen c8, the queen is too far to actually defend the position. Uh, so for example, king b6, now rook d6, uh, and after king b5, we can have, for example, this kind of checkmate, uh, and there are a couple of others uh, checkmate as well. So after rook d4, David Anton just resigned. So this, is, this was the most exciting, very complicated game of Daniel Dubov, very creative, and these lines I try to cover. I hope you like it. If you like it, press like it. For some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other games from the Air Things, Masters, Tournament, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.